Hello, how you doing? Joe here from Your Lifestyle Business, and I love today's episode. I love the guy that I've got on today's episode. Basically, I'm interviewing my good buddy, Dan, who is actually on lockdown here in Phuket, about 30 minutes away from where I live right now. He's been traveling in the world for the last 18 months. His folks are traveling the world all through building and growing their Amazon business. He's now launching a new brand in travel and photography. And he is just such an, he says, I inspire him. He totally inspires me. He's an awesome lad. And today I got him on a Facebook live and we had a really good chat about going from his story, going from redundancy um, all the way up to where he is now traveling full time. So you're going to love Dan. You're going to love the episode. Check it out. Wouldn't you love to build a business you can run from anywhere in the world, whether that be your kitchen table or a beach in Fiji? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Your Lifestyle Business, the show where I bring you into my life as a traveling entrepreneur and along with some of my awesome guests, give you tips and strategies for building your own freedom business. Welcome to the show. Let's make it happen. And uh, we are live. Um, I have got a fabulous interview today. This is day eight, day eight of my 10 day Facebook live challenge. And I actually have the challenger on the call today. Um, Mr. Daniel Worthington, uh, Dan and his mother challenged me to do a 10 day Facebook live. Um, so a live a day for 10 days, which was on the back of me challenging Dan to do 10 days of, um, one minute videos in his Instagram feed, which you did really well, Dan, didn't you? I did. It was a challenge, but I stuck to it because I think when you're challenged, it really sets you on track. And yeah, it was a challenge, but I'm glad you set it. Yeah. And I was just saying before we came on, actually, that it is quite, you know, 10 days isn't a long period of time. And you'd think, well, a one minute video is not so bad. And also coming on lives and stuff every day is not so bad. You know, it can't be that difficult. But actually, it is quite, um, quite challenging because, I mean, hence it's called a challenge because you... You a you're you're coming out of your comfort zone a little bit because that's the whole point, right? Is Absolutely. doing something. Yeah. B you're having to think of the content and you know yeah. how to sort of engage people and all the rest of it for that time period. So, yes, uh, this has been great though doing this. And today, the reason that I wanted to do today was not only to um, introduce you again to my audience, Dan. You're super inspirational, and I know they they. they oh, thank you. They're going to want to hear your story. Um, but also from the Facebook Live Challenge perspective, it's, uh, it's, it's um, a challenge for me to obviously have somebody else on the call to do the interview yeah. um, and to improve my interview techniques and also to work out the technical stuff, which we were doing just before we came on. So, Great. Um, Great. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Anyway, so let's get let's crack straight on, Dan. Let's uh, let's talk about you. Today is about you, not yeah. me. Um, so um, tell us, Dan Worthington, in one sentence, who are you? Wow. <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to switch the camera because I'm kind of big at the moment, and I'm going to make myself small in the corner because this interview is uh, for you, my darling. So I'm going to put you front and center. So just tell us a little bit about who Dan Worthington is and um, and why I'm interviewing you today. Well, I am definitely a lifestyle entrepreneur who has an online business that travels with me. Exactly what you teach and what you put out into this group is, is what I am doing, what I am living right now and have been doing full time for the past 18 months. I'm here in Phuket, Thailand. I'm working in quarantine uh, it's, it's a great life. It's, it's a good life to be able to travel with your business, which is what I dreamed about. And I'm doing that. And, and yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I, I love it. So tell us how you got started, Dan. Where did this all begin? Um, I was just going to go through life as a no, I'm going to say normal. Is that the wrong word? Probably. <laughs> um, I was at university. I was at university studying a degree called architectural technology. And I graduated with that degree. I got a job in an office, nine to five. I did that for 18 months, two years, and it literally drained the life out of me. It, it completely, you know, it, a lot of people say that, but it's true. I was in the office 
I drove an hour to work, an hour home, didn't have much time for anything else, but I knew there was something better yeah. out there. Yeah. So actually I got made redundant. I got fired. Oh, really? So that kind of kicked me into action. You know, when you lose your job, you, yeah. you have to either get another job or you, you take action and build a business. And I built a business with my, my mom, you know, she yeah. followed you and we took it from there. We really took it from there. So what inspired you to start a business rather than go and get another job then? Was it because your mum was already doing something similar or what, what, what did you see or what kicked it into action? Yeah, I was already in that space because my mum was already researching projects online from everything from affiliate marketing to social media marketing to all different things. And yeah, I was already in that mindset. My mindset was changing that, you know what, there's more to life than just working for somebody else. I knew that that wasn't something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So yeah, that's really what triggered it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so when you started, when you embarked on your journey, so you'd been made redundant. I didn't know that. So um, I did unfairly. Right. Okay. So was that because you you um, already showed signs of not being interested in doing a day job, or what? See, I, I think so. So it's I think so. Yeah. <laughs> there was two of us. We both graduated from the same university. It was a small company. There was two bosses and two employees. And basically, I think they picked the one who follows the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than rather than rather than the maverick. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. When I look back, no, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. My mind was. Oh. I, I was on my lunch break and building a business. Yeah, yeah. Funny. Awesome. So. And so, what was when you embarked on your build a business journey? What was the first uh, project you undertook? Wh which direction did you go in online? Um. Probably some social media courses with my mom yep. and local business as well, working with companies to help build their business via social media. Yeah, um, I built some websites on WordPress and things like that. Yeah, I did a lot on social media. We launched digital training courses. We, yeah, we worked with a local um, company, a local hairdresser and things like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done quite a lot, a different variety of things. I remember, I remember pre-Amazon, I remember your mum and you were doing, a la were doing some launches because we were, I remember us talking because you followed the, um, oh gosh, what was it called now? The instant sales strategy or something. And you were doing, running Facebook ads to a... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we, we did. We did a few courses actually. My mum started this before I actually got into the business. So the first few courses were without me. And then we kind of joined joined up and created a few courses, one on Google Plus, one on Twitter, I think, one on, yes, yeah, social sales system, okay. triple S, I think it was called, social sales. And it was Facebook ads into a funnel and making those sales. Yeah, we launched that. We did quite well. Yeah. Um, it was a huge spike of income and then it wasn't consistent to travel full time. And I knew my dream was to travel with the business. Yeah. Um, so we did struggle to make a consistent income with, with the launch pattern. Yes. Um, so, yeah, but it was definitely some success there. And did you create the courses yourself? Were they courses that you and your mum recorded and, and, uh, and launched? Yeah. Yeah. So we worked well as a as, as a team, really, because she created the the content, and yep. I was more of a technical designer. I did the websites, I built the sales pages, I did all the graphics, and yeah, we worked really well as a team. Okay. Our skills kind of complement each other. And how did you, when you were doing the launches, did you have an audience then? Had you built an email list, or how? Who were you launching to? How how were you doing your launches? We at the very start, we we, we did um, affiliate. Mark launches with affiliates, yeah. um, but we did build a list as well. I oh. think we had a list of around, I don't know, 10,000, 10 to 15,000. Okay, yeah. Um, through the launches. Yeah. And yeah, so it was affiliate launches through joint venture partners. So that's a great way, just a quick tip there. I'd like to just go in on a tip there for anybody who is perhaps thinking of um, 
launching any products, I was actually asked on the group not long ago by one lady who said, hey, Joe, how do I launch a product if I don't yet have any kind of list? Yeah. And uh, Dan has just basically told us that. So if you could just go into that in a bit more detail, Dan, how would somebody actually launch a product if they don't have any list as of yet? Well, first of all, create an amazing product that's going to be attractive to not only customers, but then you're searching for partners, people who've got the existing list. So you contact them, reach out to them, provide them with a free copy of your product, make it really valuable, and they'll be more than happy to promote to yeah. their existing email list. Yeah. Do that 100 times and you've got a fantastic launch. Yeah, and a list of your own because obviously, yeah. you know, they've, they've launched yeah. their list. That they're, and not only have you got a list of your own, you've got a list of buyers because That's they've it. come and bought the products and now you've got a list of people who are actually buying the product. What a great strategy to, to launch a product. Fantastic. Yeah, the most valuable, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm totally with you on the whole not being able to bring in that consistent income with launches. Um, I felt the same when I was doing launches. Um, we got to a point where a couple of our launches were so big that it was great. We didn't actually you know, need sort of that consistency, but yeah. um, it was exhausting. You know, it was, you know, when we did the launches, it was four or five days of absolute pure and utter exhaustion. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, a, yeah. it's just a killer, isn't it? And uh, yeah, it was, I was aging, visibly aging, <laughs> with every <laughs> with every launch I did. Um, so, so what happened? How did you begin to find a way to generate recurring monthly income that allowed you the freedom to travel? So here's the story. So I was completely focused on launches. I thought that the business, well, the business was it was steadily increasing. Our list was growing. Uh, audience of buyers was growing we were doing well um, it was probably taking longer than we hoped but we were doing well consistency is absolutely the key don't give up but then sue found your video on amazon so obviously you discovered the amazing incredible selling machine of amazon yep and Sue so was like, Joe's particularly excited here. Maybe we should look at this. And I said, no, absolutely not. No, no. I was really focused. I am focused. If, I, if we're doing something, then I stick to it. Um, but she bought it without telling me. And <laughs> <laughs> the rest is, is kind of where I'm at now. Yeah. And still doing that five years later. Yeah. And you've just had a particularly sex, successful couple of weeks, I understand, as well. It, I, it's exhausting because I'm working in overdrive. It feels like a launch, but I'm just putting in a lot of hours right now because it turns out that the lockdown across the world has fueled sales, particularly on Amazon, but particularly within our niche, which is arts and crafts. Yeah. And people That's are staying home, getting creative, and it's... It's, it's doing very well. It's, yeah, it's, it's great. great. It's a great time, but it's also come at a good time because we're actually staying here, locked down, can't go anywhere. So, yeah, working. It's great. So just uh, for anybody interested in the Amazon business model, Dan, just take us through the basics. Um, you know, what are, what, are, what are the sort of the key three or four steps to, to getting started and building a business on Amazon? Uh, so the basics of where to start is to source your first product yeah um so that comes with the challenges of well you don't have to deal with china but we sourced from china mm -hmm. and that can be a challenge um if you've not dealt with the chinese before mm -hmm. it's a learning curve and that was probably a difficult point for me um Choosing that first product, getting the right price, negotiating. How did you decide Almost. on your brand? How did you decide which niche you wanted to go into? So you said you're in arts and crafts. How did you come up with that decision? Um, we researched a lot of different niches and based on demand and competition. So there was quite a high demand, but not so much competition. There was a right balance, and you're looking for that balance between demand and competition so you know that the buyers are there buying the products yeah um, but the competition is you know you can get in there without being completely outrun on sellers that are charging 
less than you or yeah. they've got an existing brand or something like that. Yeah. So it's about finding the right balance and the arts and crafts niche worked well with us. Yeah. So we went with that and the first product was a hit. It took off. I think we made the first sale within literally within the first day. Oh. It was it was incredible. I don't know if it was a fluke or I don't know why, yeah. but yeah, the first day we launched and we made a sale. Yeah. So so you so you decide on your product, which you can obviously do either via researching Amazon or um, I mean, if I were if I were going to start a new Amazon business today, yeah, would one hundred percent do a product that I was really invested in because um, yeah. it's all good and well just going and buy just just creating um, sorry just coming up with your niche because it's in high demand and you know yeah. it looks like a good product, but if you're not invested in that. At the end of the day, Amazon, even though it's got, it's already got an audience, um, you still have to do some work off of Amazon to try and, and increase the rankings, don't you? To try and increase um, eyeballs on your products and all the rest of it. And so, the more interest you have in your niche or product, then the easier you're going to find that to do. Is, am I correct? I, I think that goes for everything. Yeah, absolutely. And long term, that is the key to mm. pick something that you're absolutely passionate about. Mm. I'm not an artist. I am creative. I did take architecture. I do like painting, but it's been a learning curve as well because I've had to learn. I've learned so much about painting, all the technical aspects because I've built a business not only on Amazon, but off Amazon as well. And you're answering customer support, customer queries. You have to know some technical aspects. So I, I would say if you are passionate about something, that's, it's a benefit from day one yeah yeah all right yeah. so you so you pick your niche you you go out you source your product um and uh you and i both have experience now with sourcing products from china um, yeah i i will be interested to see what happens over the supplier landscape over the next 6 12 18 months i think yeah. other markets will open up um i don't I, th I think people will source now from other countries not just china um which will be so. interesting to see um I think India is, is definitely a place to, for people to keep their eyes on and also Southeast Asia, Vietnam. I know they're working really hard to become bigger suppliers now and um, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, okay, so you, you find your supplier, you negotiate with the supplier and then what happens after that? Then you have to navigate the shipping process. Um, the good thing about this business is you don't actually have to see the product. You never have to touch it. So let's say you're ordering a full pallet of goods. You ship direct to Amazon. Yep. Um, the supplier can organize that for you if it's a good price. Again, negotiate. Mm -hmm. And it goes straight into an Amazon Where? fulfillment center. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then it's down to you from behind the laptop, behind the computer, wherever you are, to build a listing. Uh, you need photos, professional photography, and keywords, keyword research, and, and get your product up there, get your product live. Yep. Uh, that's the next step. Um, we didn't see our products. We tested samples. Testing samples is important, obviously. Make sure you're getting a good quality product. Yep. Otherwise, you'll end up with negative reviews. Yep. And the reviews are an important aspect in, in ranking on Amazon. Yep. So quality is definitely important. Don't just base it on price. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we found that with our brand as well. We had a cooking brand and um, we found the the products that we sold that were the higher quality ones out of our yeah. range of products were definitely the ones that we continued to sell well because we got such great reviews. That's it. Those reviews are so important, you know, and they really do help, obviously. So quality of product. And I say that across all niches, though, no matter what you do, yeah. you're doing you know, digital marketing, information marketing, whatever, the quality, you cannot outmarket a bad product. You know, you cannot, you, you know, it's just not possible. If you've got a bad, a bad product, then that, that's going to get out word of mouth. And yeah, you know, that's it. Yeah. So the ultimate aim is to build a brand. Yes. That, that was my aim. So you start on Amazon. It's a great platform to get you started, but you build a brand and you, your brand needs a good reputation. Otherwise. Yeah. 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 Awesome. It can be all right. So, and you've been running Amazon now for how many years? Yeah, I think it's been five years. Did we start in 2015? Is that when 
How time flies, doesn't it? It's absolutely crazy. Good. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is unbelievable. And I, I, I was doing a bit of traveling. I was in Greece when I was sourcing my first product. Right, yeah. So I remember communicating with a supplier and, and then she came back with a price that just didn't work. And I was like, oh, no, start again. Yeah. Um, then we finally got the product. Yeah. And I remember that. It was in Greece. Yeah. And, yeah, five years ago. Wow. Wow. And when did you start traveling full time, did you say? October 11th, 2018. 2018. Okay, great. Yeah. So, you, yeah. so you, were, you built your business up over sort of about three years. Yeah. 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 And then um, you were able, so that's also another great lesson. I think a lot of people, yeah. they start a business and they think overnight success, I'm going to be able to, all my dreams are going to come true in the next three months. Um, and then when they don't, People tend to give up or they go and they start looking for another strategy or another business model because they feel, oh, well, this one didn't work because it hasn't taken off quick enough, whatever. And at the end of the day, these things take time. You're building a business and absolutely it takes time, you know. Do you know what, Joe? When I sometimes it's human nature, you get impatient. But then I look at the competition in our niche and I look at some painting companies and then I go onto the website and check out when did they actually start and it's something like 1890. <laughs> How's that for patience? <laughs> yeah well fingers crossed you won't have to wait a hundred years to uh, yeah <laughs> to create your your business but okay that's brilliant so you you built your business up over about three years and then you were able to go off and start traveling full-time and you've been traveling full-time yeah. for the last 18 months or so. Yeah it's um it's it's what i wanted to achieve with the business and, and luckily we got to a point where yeah that was possible yeah and it's yeah it's been fantastic and you're currently in lockdown in phuket um unfortunately yes. not with me so you're you're like half an hour down the road from me but we can't actually be in the same room right now so strange but yeah that's true Isn't that yeah strange situation it is across the world but yeah we're not far yeah. but yeah we are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and then now you've got an exciting new adventure, which of course you can't put a lot of time into at the moment because you're spending all your time on your Amazon business because that's yeah. not crazy. Um, but, uh, and also it's probably the worst time in the world to start a travel brand because <laughs> nobody's traveling. Um, but over the next few years, you are looking to build your new brand, which we're all very excited about. Yeah. And now this goes back to what Pick, choosing something that you're actually passionate about. And it's taken me a while to realize, but photography and travel is what I'm passionate about. Yeah. And that's come as a, as a, a side effect to building a business and traveling full time. But yeah, traveling, taking photos, it's what I love. Yeah. So I think it was four weeks ago, five weeks ago, when we actually sat down and came up with a new brand name yeah. and launched a whole new brand. Yeah. So that's the exciting aspect of travel. So if you want to go and see some of Dan's excellent photography, because you, uh, you have picked a niche that you're also very, you know, inherently good at, you're, you're clearly a very talented photographer, um, then go and check out Dan at Wondering Worthy um, on Instagram. I'll put the link uh, with this um, live. So you can go and have follow him on Instagram and um, see what he's doing because uh, it's 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 an awesome um, Instagram feed. I love your photos. You're very good at what you do. Um, I think it's got more interesting since the video challenge. Yeah, people get to know me more now, and it's it's your it's great. We're getting a lot more engagement. Your engagement has rocketed. So yeah. there's a little lesson there, isn't there? I mean, yeah. Yeah, video video is so important, yeah. isn't it? It really increases that engagement. Because previously I was just posting photographs of me, of landscapes, of iconic things across the world. But now I started to do some videos. Yeah. Yeah. And people feel like they actually know the person behind the, the account. Yeah. Which so important. Which is great. So I, I'll have to do my own little Instagram challenge at some point and get yeah. videos on there as well. Um, yeah. So that's awesome. And what do you think? What, what are your main goals? Oops, I'm so sorry. My... Um phone started ringing there what are your um, main goals would you say now for at wondering worthy then over the next few years what, what what do you want to do with that brand i want to actually i want to launch a, a clothing 
line within the brand. Um, I'd love to create a nice, something that's eye catching that I can wear in locations across the world. Yeah. Just wear the clothes. I don't travel with many clothes now. That's one of the things with travel. My luggage is minimal. Yeah. And I'd love to wear some clothes that I've designed. Yeah. Uh, that would be a, a goal of mine. Um, I'd love to work with hotels and travel companies and and promote them via my brand. That would be amazing. That's a long-term goal. Yeah. So I'll keep working on the photos and, and building the brand and take it from there. Yeah. Brilliant. That's excellent. Yeah. You need nice, lightweight lightweight t-shirts you know those really really yeah. light ones that also yeah. are non um don't need ironing they don't crease yeah. um they're super lightweight they don't crease that you can wear them into the sea even and they'll just come out and dry really quickly yeah and so that's a good idea yeah yeah, yeah like very good. with the little at wondering worthy logo i like that the little because you've got a really nice logo as well Oh, Dan, I love it. Let's see if we have any questions. <laughs> Your mum has put, this is so interesting, even though I know the story. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So glad you found your son's story interesting, Sue. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's sat right over there, and I think there's a slight delay on the live, so she's got her headphones on. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, has anybody got any questions for Dan? Anybody on the call? Um, oh, hold on. I, let me see if there is anybody on the call. Um, yes, there are some people on the call. So if you have any questions for Dan, then just put them in the um, question box here. Um, I will ask you, Dan, what tips have you got for anybody who is currently just starting a lifestyle business or who is already on the journey and is just beginning to grow their business? Uh, maybe is a little bit sort of frustrated with the process or finding it all a bit slow or whatever. What tips have you got for people out there who really want to build a lifestyle business to give them the freedom to be able to work from anywhere? Yeah. First, you have to decide on what do you actually want to achieve? Is it a full-time travel life or is it just a bit extra income so you can enjoy life a bit more? Once you set that goal, you, you, you can really work towards that. And then, yeah, you need patience don't expect it to happen overnight because it's true. It's, there's no overnight success. Even if this goes for everything like celebrities, sports, athletes, business, it's everything. There's no overnight success. It just doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And if it does, it's like 0.0%. Yes. Um, maybe winning the lottery or something like that. So you have to realize that it does take work. You have to be dedicated and determined that that's what you want to achieve. And then if you put your mind to it, work towards that goal consistently, I think you can do it. I tell anyone that they can do that. I get a lot of messages on Instagram and they ask, how did you actually achieve? How do you travel? They say, how do you travel? And basically just worked hard, tried lots of different things, then ultimately built a brand and took it from there. And do you think this will be you for, for forever now? Do you think you're, you will um, be an entrepreneur, a lifestyle entrepreneur pretty much now for, for the next 30, 40, 50 years? Yeah, absolutely. I know that there's too many ways to make money on, online. Yeah. So I've got the knowledge now and there's no way I'm going to be going working in an office. Although I've got my degree, which I'm proud of, you know, building, working hard for that degree was... Uh, an achievement. I'm really proud of that. But as for working in an office, no, not not really. Don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> working from a, a, a beachfront apartment sounds nicer, to be honest. Yeah. But it does take work. It's not about just sitting on the beach drinking a cocktail, is it? No. It's, it's work. So that's the illusion that some people portray online. Yeah. But no. But the goal of a lifestyle business, this is what I love about the terminology of the lifestyle business is yeah. doing something you enjoy doing. So even if you are working, so even if you spend the rest of your life working on Wondering Worthy, for instance, taking photographs and, yes. and working with hotels and yeah. selling clothes and things like that, you're doing something you enjoy doing. So you've, you've built exactly. around your lifestyle. Your business is your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is your business. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's the whole thing. Um, 
Well, I did a video about this. It was the last video in the 10 day challenge. And it said that I have designed the business to travel with me. Yes. I have designed a, a, a lifestyle that travels full time. And even I designed to be stuck here in Phuket. That sounds weird, but I did. Yeah. So I take a break. I'm working full time now, but I take a break in the afternoon and go for a swim. Yeah. It's just one of the benefits of being in isolation in Phuket rather than being in isolation in the UK. Absolutely. And your mum yeah. wants to know when she can officially retire. <laughs> Absolutely not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. So soon, soon. <laughs> too, too busy. It, it's just a bit too busy. Yeah. Well, that's been brilliant, Dan. It's been an absolute joy to chat to you today. Thank you so much for coming on. And um... Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. To join in the conversation, please head over to yourlifestylebusiness.com where you can find links to podcasts, show notes, and sign up to download my free ebook, How to Build a Business You Can Run, from anywhere in the world. Also, make sure you come and join our Facebook community. Just search for Your Lifestyle Business on Facebook and you'll soon be sharing ideas with like-minded entrepreneurs all on the same journey. Lastly, if you have a moment, please subscribe and quickly rate this podcast on iTunes. It takes a tenth of a second to hit the little stars and your rating will ensure it gets out to more people and impacts as many as possible with the message, make it happen. Thank you so much. See you next time.